Hello and welcome to the third episode of our modding tutorial series. Today we are going to mainly talk about some aspects of the debug menu, especially the ones that are built into Noita. And I want to quickly highlight these two mods, Cheat GUI and Spell Lab. Now, Cheat GUI basically does what Spell Lab can do, but um, the interface that Spell Lab provides is very easy to use. Basically, both of these mods together allow you to teleport to places. You can spawn any perks you want. You can get gold. You can, you know, whatever spells or wands you want. It just allows you to give those things to you easily um, so that you can do your testing. Now, we're going to start a new game. Again, I'm using the Noita dev. Exe. So if you go into the Noita folder, instead of the standard Noita, I'm using the Noita dev.exe and that's why you can see all of this code. It's basically just telling you what the game is doing. So if there's any error, this is where it will show up. So I'm going to start a new game and then we're going to go over all the aspects of the debug menu. Now this is something that happens a lot. I just tend to ignore. I don't know what that crash is. Right, so in the Noita dev.exe, what I'm going to do is press F1 and you'll see a bunch of text on the screen. I'm just going to move to where it's easily readable. Right, so there's a bunch of things that you can do here. F1 will show and hide this menu, and there's a lot of different stuff you can do, which we're going to get to. And F2, F3, and F4 all deal with screenshotting. So like if you want to take a GIF or something, let me just drop these two wands because they're going to get in my way. Right. So, Control and F4 records a video. This is all for recording videos. Now, F5 is the one you want to press. It's going to enable debugging, right? which is allowing you to do a bunch of stuff where you're not normally allowed to do it. Right, sorry about that. So, F5 opens the debug menu. It allows you to debug mode. I can press it again. It's going to disable debugging. If I enable it, debugging is now enabled. So, there's a lot of things you can do with debugging. Right, we're going to ignore this first section here. One of the things that you can do is enter or return. allows you to despawn the player and respawn it at the mouse position and while the player is despawned you can use the arrow keys or your WASD keys to move the camera around and then when I press enter again it's going to spawn the player at the mouse position very useful for like if enemies are troubling you can just despawn the player or if you want to move great distances or move through walls very very useful then control U pauses the simulation it literally just pauses the entire game right um, and then those are very useful for just like taking a break or despawning the player allowing you to plan something or read the code while the game is running right now control o control s and control i are all about the inspector right you can open up an entity so i'm going to click control o and it wants me to load an entity so i need to go to the noita data entities and then you can open any entity you want here so I'm just going to go to items, pick up, and something like evil eye. Right? So it's going to spawn it and then give you here on the right all the properties of that evil eye, which is basically the Pahasilma item. Right? So this is giving me all of the properties of that thing. Now, then you can close the inspector with control I. And if you want to look at the inspector, I believe that was I and click, basically just left click. So there's the Pahasilma. I'm going to try and click on it with I and then left click. And there you see I opened up the Pahasilma. In like basically this is giving information about that item. So I'm going to close the inspector. Then control tab opens the material menu. And this is all about materials. Control tab, this is the material. Now, 
I've actually gotten very much lost in this material menu. Basically, it allows you to paint um, like a standard, you know, those old school physics simulation games. Um, what I'm going to do is despawn the player and go to a more open area and respawn the player with enter. And now here, this is my tutorial, my menu on all the materials in the game. And you can basically filter if I only want the liquids of the game and if I only want either dynamic or static materials. If I only want the sand, which is basically terrain, then solid material, which is those materials affected by physics, for example, ice. We're going to cover materials all in the future video. Then you have gas and fire. Now, on the top here, you can choose your brush size. So I'm going to go back to my menu. Control tab opens the menu and closes the menu. And if you click 0 to 9, uh, it's basically selecting a material. You click shift and a number, selecting the brush size. And then I need to select a material. So let's choose sand. Let's go with something like rock static intro. Right? Now I'm going to control and click. Not just clicking on your own. Clicking on your own is spraying pheromones, right? It's doing nothing. What I'm going to do is control click, right? And as you can see, you can paint basically creating new material out of nowhere. And you can select a different material. So let's say I wanted some holy mounted brickwork, temple brick static. I'm going to click to select it and then control click to paint. Right? So that is how you can paint materials. And then if I wanted a liquid, let's just do something here. And obviously your size shift and the number keys determines the size. So now I want a liquid. Let's maybe get Mm, let's just choose anything, for example, what about Midas? Ah, that's going to ruin everything. I'll go with lava, right? And remember again, control click to paint. Now, if you control and right click, it's going to remove. Basically deleting the terrain, right? So that is the materials menu. And believe me when I say that I've basically spent two hours just messing around with that menu alone, just painting materials and testing out the interactions. If you click H, it's going to create a huge explosion. So I'm just going to click H. It's going to spawn an explosion where your cursor is. Right? So, and obviously that's hitting me apart. So I think it's a nuke, but I'm not sure. But I do know it's quite powerful. Right? Um, and another thing to know, in the debug mode, if you die, you don't actually die. So I can kill myself. All I have to do is click enter, which is despawning the player, and click enter again, and then I'm back to normal. Right? So I'm going to move back to the place where I was. Now, P, when it says create a peasant, there's actually no file for the item, the entity it's trying to spawn. So if you click P, nothing's actually going to happen. You see it's giving me an error up top. Right? So P doesn't actually do anything. Shift P creates a test wand, which I'm going to go to now. So Shift P, where your cursor is, it's going to spawn a test wand, which basically has some ridiculous stats. If you look at it, 900 mana max, 90,000 mana charge speed. It's quite a ridiculous wand. It's called poison wand for some reason, but anyway, you can spawn that one. Now we'll get to spawning wands with the mods later on. Then... Um, you can spawn a barrel with Y. Again, all of these are going to spawn where your cursor is. And then I can make an explosion with H and blow all of them up. <laughs> like I said, messing around in the debug menu is quite satisfying. Then spawning in a few enemies. I'm just going to move over here with... Where is it? Z spawns a zombie. It's those dogs that spawn on the first level can spawn in all of them and I'm just gonna kill them with an explosion because I don't want to deal with them and shift Z spawns the he C shotgunners a bunch of those and then 
shift alt and z will spawn those smg guys x spawns a worm again all of this is where the cursor is and they're going crazy so i'm just gonna despawn the player and then here's one of the interesting ones t and shift t which are things i use a lot so i'm gonna click shift t it says load a pixel scene a pixel scene is basically an image that the game uses to draw terrain right based on what you see so i'm going to go to data biome implementation and you can see all of these images here you might even recognize some of them right so let's just choose let's choose this here boss victory room dot png this is basically an image when based on the color that you see the game knows what material to spawn right so that's this is basically a pixel scene so i'm going to click on it choose where to spawn it and then the game will load it in right um based on that thing so i'm going to go shift t again shift t to load up and then i can go into any of these let's go to maybe snow castle any of these pixel scenes for example forge so remember visual is just a visual this here is the pixel scene right this color here this gray color the game knows when it sees that and it knows that color it means metal so when i click there click over it and there i have my um pixel scene and it loaded it in for me and i'm going to spawn the player there right so that's a pixel scenes i use them a lot they're very useful and um, they're very useful for loading so when you make your own terrain or when you want to create some terrain um, that's a very good way of doing it and we're going to get into materials and terrain in the next episode as well right so then scroll to the bottom here there's a few other things that are pretty important most of these i haven't messed with all of it but if you want to see the box 2d drawings you can click B and basically box 2D is anything that has physics right so if I go to solid objects and ice as we know ice actually has physics you can see there box 2D has drawn a square around it because if I kick this object it's gonna have physics right you see how the green is falling falling that's basically physics that the game has to simulate right so if you want to see those uh hit boxes you can press b to enable or disable them right then another one you can do is shift b which is showing you update rects right now you, i don't know if you can see it, there's like these green boxes that are flashing in and out what's happening is the game is checking that area and just updating the physics in that area right so if i start shooting you can't see it it's very fast but it's like blinking and it's updating there then if i wanted to press v i don't know i haven't seen it do anything but it says switching of smooth rendering on and off all right end is the toggle collision checker debug drawing i'll show you what that means now if you see the player has all these little squares around them these are basically hit boxes right so the yellow one is where the player can sorry the blue one within the yellow one is where the player can take damage if i shoot you'll see my spark bolt has a square around it right and where it's hitting on the wall it has a red that's basically a hitbox to say deal damage in this area right so if you wanted to see the hitboxes that's what you can do um another thing where was it now there was a way to switch off the shaders which we'll get to now control p is the profile it's basically giving you information about everything in the game um this is a whole bunch of nerdy stats which outside of the scope of what i know but if this is interesting to you then if you need this information obviously make use of it and then there was one more thing right at the bottom l is opening the weather system so if you want to change the weather you can do all of that and basically these are all of the debug menu commands that you can use to make your modding easier 
mine so i highly recommend you check out all of these things because they make it very easy for you to do your modding like i was doing my modding basically with only these two mods which i'm going to show now right so cheat gy i've always modded with this mod enabled because it makes things easy you can spawn whatever perk you want right um you can give any perk you want to you so for example i always give myself all seeing eye because it makes things easier and any spell you want you can create a wand with the exact stats that you want you can give yourself any of the items that exist in the game um you can give yourself edit ones everywhere basically the perk that allows you to you know edit your wants you can teleport to any areas now all of these areas are coming from translation keys you can just ignore them right you can teleport to any of the holy mountains EC base underground jungle it makes things very easily right um, volcanic lake I wanna go here it loads me up there now these hitboxes are kind of getting in the way so I'm going to remove them I even forgot the thing right so you can always just come back to this menu and it was not B it was shift B right? nope that was something else I'm pretty sure it was N right got rid of that so cheat gui very useful mod i highly recommend you use it to supplement your own modding making it easier um then we have spell lab which whoops we have spell labs which if you enter the spell lab this is basically an area where you can spawn wands with the wand spawner and then give yourself any spell you want from the game right even if you have mods enabled it will give you a selection from those spells as well so very useful i use it all the time to tinker around and create certain ones that i need right, so i'm just going to teleport back to zero zero so yeah that's all the debug commands of the noitadev.exe that's given to us by the developers and obviously the two mods that i use a lot spell labs and cheat gui both of them very useful and again f1 is to show and hide this menu and f5 is to enable and de disable debugging then if you press escape you'll see at the bottom right this is normally not seen clean bones uh, basically the noita ghost that can spawn has a folder called bones folder and i'm pretty sure clean bones is clearing that folder if you wanted to see all the stats of this current game you can go in there you can reset the stats and check everything out there and then if you wanted the debug menu it's basically here another menu which allows you to you know do certain things test being created from sky a lot of things you can do i highly recommend you to check it out tinker around like i said I was sitting here before recording this video for two hours just messing around with all of the settings playing around spawning in enemies uh, you know exploding them and then spawning some materials with the material picker and the painter material painter is basically giving me a feeling of that old timey physics games that I used to play you know just spawn click a material and then paint it um, very good stuff that they have added for us to make it easy right now one more thing this crash me button i don't know what it does but it actually does crash the game <laughs> um so just take note of that and then obviously the game is actually crashed so i don't know how it crashes the game but yeah don't click that button if you have a game running so yeah thanks for watching if you have any other questions be sure to leave them in the comments and Good luck with all your Noita modding.